Hey, what is up, everybody? It is No One Shot Car back to you with another Star Trek Fleet Command video. Today, we're going to talk about how to create your sarcophagus. Some of you guys may have gotten it for free or close to free to where you only had to spend 100 bucks for the ship versus the real price tag of $300 like some of us have or some others have. It is a pricey ship. It is definitely a one trick pony, but it can do some massive damage if you look at some of these numbers. But before we get into the video, don't forget to hit like subscribe that bell notification down below don't forget to join my discord and under that if you hit that see more button where that discord link is there is a donation link if you guys want to help donate down there and it, below that is a join if you want to help the channel out and get a shout out at the end of the video in the credits or just want to help the channel out a month there is a join button at the bottom hit click to join become a member for two five ten or twenty dollars a month all right let's get into the video where we're going to actually talk about the Dreda sarcophagus the Mayflower to the Payflower 2.0, maybe, maybe what we can call it, the sarcophagus, the coffin. I call her Big Bertha normally because she, she a big, she a big ship. I can't say the word on the stream, but she a big ship. If, like I said, I pull her out, she is massive. Comparing her right next to my Enterprise, she is a massive beast. But let's get in the video. Let's actually talk about it. Let's actually talk about crewing her. There are several options for crewing. There are several options for doing it, but. To be honest, on this ship, you need to run Harrison as a definite because usually in these battles, you probably won't make it past three rounds with the ship. You won't make it past three rounds because you your first firing phase is the first phase, which shoots eight shots. Your second firing phase is your third phase. During your second or your second phase where you, the second round, you're not even doing any damage because you're just taking it all in. There's several options you can go by. I had two people help me out with this information, Ning and uh, Secret Squirrel. He, they both helped me out greatly, and they deserve the shout on this video because they really did help. Let's look at the first crew. This is the crew that I'm currently running. I got it from this crew from a different Discord. I have seen promising results with this. I've hit, oh my god, I've actually hit, uh, or Hegtha has hit me, and I've basically taken half its hull away. Let me see if I can somehow find that log. Sorry to be looking away for a second. This ain't professional, but this is what I do. Uh... Where is that log at? I sent it to... Dang it, I can't find it. I'll look it up right now. Actually, I can find it. I think... Let's see. So, since we have battle logs up to 300 at this point, let's go down. And we should be getting close to it once these logs actually log in. So, Nimitz, Nimitz. Um, Zubla. Nimitz, Nimitz, Nimitz. That should be getting close to theirs. No, that was my defense with Nova the other day. Let's go down a little further in my log, see if I actually have it, unless I killed too many enemies. Uh, I wish I hoped these logs. So yeah, here we go. Is this the log right here where I hit the head tower for about half? So here's the log where, I, this is what I was running for. Oh, we got my face. Let's move you right here because we're gonna let these logs quick. So in these logs, as you see, my sarcophagus with Captain Kelly, aka Killy, Gorkin, and Harrison basically took down half a Hegtha. That repair cost alone is nuts. But if we look at some of these, if we look at this log, and let's look at the damage. So, look how fast the shield went down. Let me move myself over one more here. So, we have the sarcophagus hit that Hegtha did. It's 1600 the Charvenic for the piercing, which it was a smart play to put Charvenic on there because that's anti-battleship. She's good at that. Then you have Harrison at 80% right away. Then Yuki stripped one 10% of my shell or my shield, which really doesn't matter because the shield on a sarcophagus is so small. He could have went with something else on that one. And he opened up his first volley with a 404,000 404, damage, which I mitigated 70k of it. So about 344k went to the shields, which really didn't have anyways. And 309k, or actually. Yeah, 309k went to my hull. I probably read the first one wrong. Depleted my hull right or my shield right away. As you see, at least just two volleys right away onto me. But once the sarcophagus ramps up, even versus a Hegtha that shoots first, usually the those ships don't even survive the first round, the first few hits from this ship. So as you can see here, first hit was did 721,000 damage. He was able to mitigate 4, 000, or 478,000 worth of it, and 380 or about 387k went to his shield and actually 38k went to his shield and 203k went to his hull and the next 
shot from next volley. This is probably gonna be it's kinetic coming from the sarcophagus. Did about 1.491 million damage. 1.4 million damage. Jesus. He was able to mitigate 990k of the damage. But 420k went right to his hull. Why does it keep going to his hull? Harrison. Next round, 70 uh, about 785k. Meh. Then our next round, 1.6 million. And then another 471k right to his hull. And then finally, since I critted, Gorkin pulls in a hull breach. Hull breach pops on for three rounds. Activates Killy, which is her base ability is about 60% at tier 2, which is basically uh, mitigation, which is going to help me mitigate a little bit of damage, even though my shields are already down. And then you can see this massive, massive critical, 2.3 million. Still in the first round, still Harrison hitting. And he absorbed 1.5 million of it, but took 653k to the to this hull. And then we had another 700k, another 600k, another 700k. Sarcophagus goes again, hull breach, do another non-critical, a non-critical 2 million hit. Sarcophagus wraps up. One, two. Sarcophagus critted beyond belief, a 5.7 million crit. Holy frick. And remember, mine's a tier 9, so he absorbed that much of... I can't even fathom the amount of damage it did. I haven't even looked at these battle locks till right now. And then, boom, we're out of the first phase. And we're into the second phase where it doesn't do anything. So, you see Killy activated in this round coming up. So, we're absorbing a little damage, but we're not absorbing a lot of it. As you see, the shields are down, and the Hegthaw's just tearing me apart. If I can survive these last volleys, then I would have done a lot more damage to them. But as you guys can see, this is one of the go-to crews that I've been running. There are other crews out there that are starting to amaze me, and I'll show you some of them. So that was the one we got from that log. First, the Hegthaw. In the other ship, you can see it ramaging. If it's a Hegthaw and Hegthaw, that's a whole different story. I've had a few of those battles where <laughs> they were gnarly too. But let's go to my desktop. On my desktop, we have a few we have a few uh, images. So we had Secret Scroll. This is one of the ships that he's been, or one of the crews that he's been actually doing. So he has five or ten. Levis, and I think that's I can't remember which ten of that one is, but he has those combined, and you can see the Enterprise was about a quarter health. So even if we did the math, there's a quarter health. So he'd probably be about half health from that point. Versus, that's not bad. This person should have used the Charvinic on that side right here instead of Alex versus it since it's a battleship. Here's another one from Secret Squirrel. He says, this one seems to be all right since it's Lorca, Killy, and Gorgon, which I think these two should swap personally. But this is one of the ones he has showed in it. The ones that have been amazing me is this. So Ning sent me these ones out and I thought they were pretty cool. Big shout out to Ning for this one. So he got his friend... Uh, Joe Henny to test this out from Maquis, which this is a server that has Steve Aaron in it, which awesome. So if we look at the left, we have he's running both muds and Gorkin. If one of the muds activate, yeah, it's good ship. But he's still one versus Killy, Lorca, uh Harrison. He was able to overcome him, but you gotta see there's about 700k of uh, power difference, but when they swap, when this guy uh, Joe Henny swapped out his uh, got he swapped it out. He put Lorca in command. He put Killy in the secondary seat because sadistic. That's what you want from her from Hull Breach, and then you want Harris on the side. As you can see, that power difference where he blew that other. This is kind of like the ultimate test. To be honest, I wish I had the exact logs, exact damage of it. He sent me him, but we know no one shows too lazy to go over logs. Just he struggles at reading them. But anyways, from these three or four images, we have possibilities of crews we can go with. With these ships, go back to my live. Oop, going back there. With these ships, you want to output as much damage as possible during your first round. And then when you get to the second round and third round, you want to be able to mitigate as much to last into these rounds to be able to actually do some 
more damage than you are. Because your first round, as you see those numbers, I did my first round, are mind-blowing with this ship. And even though it's only active on a takeover node, but it does tide over the wars, uh, tide over a lot of these territory captures where you have these whales out there that have these big ships and they're just walking through you. You can throw one of these on a node and the whales will struggle to get through you. And these aren't going through your base resources. These are going through a special resource to that you get on a daily basis from doing your little territory capture thing in the store. And if you can get the ship for free, it will do a game changer. Remember from 34... Or from 30 to 34, you can only get to 3. 34 to 39, you can only get to tier 9. And or 39, you can get to tier 6. I can't remember it. But the last one to get to the last to tier 12, you need Ops 41. And as you can see, I'm at tier 9. Do you think I'm going to go any further than this? Nah. I'm going to work on those officers. Hopefully get Lorca down the road. And be able to do some more testing and showing more off. I got to thank Ning and a few other, and uh, Squirrel actually for showing these off. And if anyone doesn't know Lorca's ability, my last but not least hurrah for this this video is let's go down to Lorca. All the way down. And when Lorca levels up, he's going to be an interesting one. His manipulation, at the start of each round, if the opponent has a hull breach, Lorca increases the, or decreases the weapon damage of your enemy by 100%. That's incoming damage. Which we know it's not a true 100%. It's because you have them all stacked on top of each other. And then we got the quick thinking. This is the one that I'm looking forward to when you see him start to level up. Because it starts to activate right off the bat. So Killy's Sadistic would kick in. Which more mitigation would hit. For two rounds right away. And then on top of that. Decreased damage coming out from them. So that's increased more mitigation. Jesus. He's going to be an interesting officer to have. Hopefully one of these days I'll have him. But you see I got a long road ahead of me. Just like some of you guys have for him. This is the one time. I don't have them up front, but I have the other officers to show you guys like I did. Killy is amazing just for her base mitigation that she can do when she gets into that level process. You got Lorca, which is awesome. A lot of you guys may not have Harrison, but he might be an end dream for you guys, a goal for you guys to get. Because he's one of those one of those guys that are going to be amazing to have no matter what. At the beginning of the game, he was just a game breaker. Now, he's not so much of a game breaker. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like the subscribe button, the bell notification down below. Remember to join that Discord and that see more button. And below that is going to be a donation. If you guys want to donate, it is down there. And if you guys want to become a member, like I said, join button down there. Become a member. Help me out. All right, guys. It is No One Shout signing out. Be positive. Have a wonderful day. Deuces.